Have you ever noticed how toolbox components snap right into place when you add them in your assemblies? Ever wish your parts could do the same thing? Oftentimes, designers use components that are intended to snap together like this set of connectors. Watch as I drag this connector into the assembly. As soon as I drag it near the other connector, it snaps right into place. In fact, if I took a look at the mates that were just added, you can see that three coincident mates were added automatically. This is from something called mate references that were set up ahead of time on both parts. If you look at the feature tree for the connector, notice there's a folder called mate references. You can see a reference called snap. If I open the other connector, you can see it also has a mate reference called snap. Since both connectors have a mate reference with the same name, anytime you have them in the same assembly, SolidWorks will try to snap them together. The good news is that mate reference pairs can be set up on any of your own mating components. Here's how. For an assembly like this, if I want the gear and the shaft to snap together automatically, they need to have matching mate references. I'll open the gear in its own window. Mate references can be found under the reference icon here. This is where you can specify the primary, secondary, and tertiary references. Try to remember which is which when you make your selections, because these will need to match the references on the other component in order to work correctly. I'll use the cylinder for the primary reference, and choose concentric for the mate type. I'll change the alignment option to Aligned. In case you're not familiar with mate alignment, this is the setting that tells SolidWorks which side of a flat face to mate with the other. If it's set incorrectly, the part might come in upside down. The secondary mate will be the top flat face of the gear, and I'll make this a coincident mate, and use any for the mate alignment. Finally, for the tertiary reference, I'll select the flat internal face of the gear, and make this parallel and any for the mate alignment. Before clicking OK, one important thing you need to do in order for the mate reference pairs to work correctly is give them matching names. I'll call this one gear pin, and I'll be sure to name the mate reference on the shaft component the same. I'll click OK and return to the finished assembly. I'll quickly repeat these steps for the shaft component. I'll open it, launch mate references, and I'll go ahead and type in the name gear pin. Again, the primary reference is the cylinder, and it will be concentric, with aligned for the mate alignment. The secondary reference is the top flat face, and it will be coincident with any alignment type. And the tertiary reference will be the flat locating face, with a parallel mate type with any alignment. That's all there is to it. Let's see how the mate references are working. I'll create a new assembly file from this part. And if I tile my windows, I can see the gear part we were working on a moment ago. When I drag it into the assembly, it snaps right into place, and the three mates are created from the mate references. If you have any trouble getting your parts to snap together, be sure to double check that the mate references have the same names, and the primary, secondary, and tertiary references have the correct mate types and alignment. If you have parts that you use on a regular basis, and you spend a lot of time creating the same mates over and over again, you can save a lot of time by setting up mate references ahead of time so the parts can quickly snap together in the future. Thank you. This has been a SolidWorks time saver.